Hi, this video will get you started writing apps using DGraph's Go client. DGraph is a lightning fast distributed graph database written entirely in Go. Any program can access a DGraph server through its HTTP endpoint, but programs written in Go can use our Go client and access DGraph through gRPC. Let's start by bringing up a server. So here's the directory where DGraph is going to persist its graph data. Here's where it's going to store its write ahead logs. This is the HTTP port, and here's the gRPC port. I'm also telling it to bring up a user interface that we can access in a browser at 8081. So if I start that up, it prints out some logging output, and we can see that I'm running release 0.8, our latest release version. So let's go over to the user interface. I'd previously loaded some data into that directory where I started the server, and it's about movies and actors and directors. So here's a query for the movie Blade Runner. We were returning its name in English, the director's name, and for every actor starring in the movie, the actor's name and the character that they played. Running that gives us a graph back as a result. Right in the middle is our movie Blade Runner, and along the pink line is the director Ridley Scott, and all the other nodes are about actors and the roles that they played. So if we look at the JSON output, we can see the actors and the characters that they played. For example, there's Harrison Ford. Okay, now let's write a Go program that accesses this data through the DGraph client. Here's the start of a simple program. I've imported gRPC and dialed up a connection to 1981. I've also opened up a temporary directory that the client uses to store some data, but we won't need that in this example. So let's get ourselves a client. Firstly, we better import it. Um, import the client. Get a new DGraph client. Now this takes a slice of connections. That's useful if we are connecting to a cluster where We've got multiple nodes and we might want to spread our connections, spread our queries and requests across the cluster. I'll just use the default options and our directory. So I've opened up a new client. Pretty much everything we do in the client starts with a request. So a request is what's going to handle queries and mutations, changes to the data. So let's take our request and set the query in it. I've previously saved, oops, saved a query here. So here's a query that's a little bit simpler than the one we just saw in the interface. It only returns the unique node identifier, the name, and the initial release date. So let's make it search again for Blade Runner. Then I've also got some structures. So this struct corresponds to the movie. It's got a name, an ID, and a release date. And the tags in the structure are the same as the, what we're returning in the query. Then I've also got another structure that's going to help us unpack the results of the query. So let's set the query to be our query. Then we can run it. So running it returns a response and an error. And we need a context as well. And we'll just use background. Oh. and our request. But deal with the error. Okay, so that's run. Right, we'll run the query and save the result in re response. So we can now use this structure to help us unmarshal the result. So get a movie result variable and then use client dot unmarshal which takes the response and a pointer to our structure and we'll unmarshal the query answer into the structure that we've given it and then let's just print that out. Okay, so as long as there's no errors, 
that should connect to the client and run the query, then print the response out. Let's run that over here. So we just compile it and run it, and we get back Blade Runner. Its unique identifier is two, and its release date. So that's a query in the client. Let's now change the data a little bit. Let's make a mutation. We need another request. And we're going to be connecting nodes in our graph. So let's get a node for Blade Runner. So use our client to get, using the UID that we know from the query, actually let's call that Blade Runner. And let's get a new node from Michael. And that's going to be blank node. Let's do with that error. That's not new. And let's set Michael as a director of Blade Runner. So we've got a node for Blade Runner and a node for Michael. Let's get an edge and Let's give Michael a name. And we'll set the value of that edge to be the string Michael. So we've got an, a node for Michael, given it a name Michael, and now let's add that to our request. So ers equal to rec.set, so set says put this edge into the request and when you run the request it will add the mutation to the database. Better deal with our errors again. And then let's add another edge which is going to be Michael connected to the movie. Let's say Michael's a director of Blade Runner. So there's another edge and we'll also add that one to the database. So we're adding two edges, one for Michael's name and one to say Michael's a director of Blade Runner. Let's run that mutation. We're not going to need that. And that's not new. All looks good. Okay. So now let's run it again. So we'll still run the query first and output this, but then it's run the mutation. So let's check over here and see if our graph output is different. So I'll run the query. And now there are two directors in the movie. One of them is Ridley Scott, like it should be, and one of them's me. So there we go. We've written a small Go program that does queries and mutations from a DGRAPH server.